There is never a shortage of hot takes on the Dallas Cowboys. It's like every day... Those of us in the talk space try to one-up each other with hot takes on the Dallas Cowboys. A day does not go by without a few dozen Cowboys hot takes. It's a franchise for a number of reasons, but it's a franchise that lends itself to constant speculation. And when you really break down why it is Dallas is so popular nowadays, or unpopular, take your pick... They're talked about mainly because of the owner. Really, it's a nondescript team for the most part. It's about the owner. So they are, because he never shuts up, the guy that owns the team who's over the top, he's an over-the-top character. He doesn't know how or when to stop talking. So the Cowboys make for good drama, always, because of him. He never really knows when to shut up. Dallas is America's team in this way, and probably only this way, because the term America's team is pretty cheesy and silly anyway. But if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna hijack it and say, well, the Cowboys are America's team, they are only America's team in this way. I think. Disagree if you'd like. Half the country enjoys hating them. Maybe more than half the country enjoys hating them. Half the state enjoys hating them. Particularly in the Northeast, they're just a team, I would say again, mainly because of their owner, that people enjoy hating. It's pretty easy to do. The Kansas City Chiefs, I would submit, are a much better claim to America's team. They're the most interesting team in sports for a number of reasons. They're just compelling. They're a mess at times. They're spectacular at times, but they're always compelling. If you add it up with the Chiefs, they are far more dramatic than any team in sports. They win in dramatic ways, almost always. It always is going to be fascinating how they win. They have the biggest stars in football with some of the most public stars in all of sports. They own the commercial side of football. They own the commercial side of American sports. Between Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes, I don't know who beats them in terms of commercial time. It's doubtful. They have plenty of drama. They are a constant source of controversy. A week doesn't go by with the Chiefs that something bizarre is not going on. Whether it's a player, a coach, even a stadium deal, they even have Taylor Swift hanging around. It all just works to a good mix, right? That's America's team. That's the most compelling story in sports. But forget that. When you think about Dallas, what's funny about Dallas now, um, and remember, they've been mediocre a long, long time. They've been without star power for a long time. The mid-90s, they had star power and they won. They haven't had star power in a long time. They're dramatic just because of the owner. The quarterback is good among the two best in the NFC, but he's boring. The man does mattress commercials. He doesn't say anything wrong. He doesn't do anything controversial. Micah Parsons is a star, but quarterback and wide receiver are the diva positions. That's what people know. That fantasy football has created an entire world that knows nothing about defense, nor does it care. So he makes a lot of noise, but people don't pay attention. Their head coach is a boring doofus. I mean, nobody even knows what he's saying. Um, It's not a team that has stars. It's really not. They're high profile because of their history, and they're high profile because of their owner, and that's it, I would submit to you. So, but they always lead the talk cycle conversation. Always. They are a constant source of debate and speculation. um, This is a new hot take. This one's new. Look, the old man's selling? Wait, what? He's selling? The old man that owns the team, this hot take goes, is preparing to sell the team. Now, let me say a few things about the reasoning behind this. Because he's really old. They're not very good. And... I don't know. You want to make an argument? They're at peak value. You can make a, I can make a whole list of reasons why it's a good time for the old man to sell or getting close to the right time to sell. 
So the reasoning behind Jerry Jones going to sell makes some sense when you add it up. If you're objective about it and you think it through and you sort of just step back, I don't think it's going to happen, by the way, and I can tell you all the reasons why, and not all of them have to do with him. But if you, if you take a step back, the argument here is, is fairly reasonable. I could see how you could see how someone would come to the conclusion that old man Jerry Jones is going to sell. Now, I think the big issue is who's buying. But his name is Craig Carton. He does a show on Fox Sports. He went all in, I don't know, around the 4th, around the 5th. I don't know when it was. But, man, this thing is, this one's pretty good dramatic conversation. The team. I think they are streamlining finances. I think they are shedding salaries. And I think they are preparing themselves for what would be the largest sale in the history of uh, North American sports. I don't think they're in it to win it anymore. I don't think they're committed to put a championship product on the field. And I think Jerry Jones, at 80-something years old, would rather give his kids a check for a couple of billion dollars and wish them well than deal with a failing football team that he's going to leave to them to make it even worse. I would not be surprised if we start hearing rumblings that Jerry Jones is going out to hedge funds and Saudi Arabia and Abu Dhabi and trying to find a suitor to give him the largest check ever given to the owner of a North American sports franchise. That would not shock me. Well, there you go. There's a new twist. Uh, Every day, something different with Dallas. Now, hang on a second. Hang on. It's not bad logic. I can see how somebody would end up there. Okay? Now, I can tell you why it won't happen. And it's not going to be the exciting, sexy reasons that you like. Um, And I think the Saudi angle is actually fairly fascinating and disturbing all at the same time. But let, let's let's walk through this. First of all, you can react to that hot take, which is it's picked up steam. I mean, uh, you know, the sport the sports media space is not the sharpest. They're not very good at economics, and I and I have to say, I think the guy is right. They haven't spent any money. Oddly, haven't spent any money. It's weird what little they've done for that franchise in the past nine months. It's weird. It's negligent it really does they have sat there they have waited they have made a bunch of noise but done nothing nothing for that franchise they've done nothing to help out their quarterback who they say is their franchise they've got one of the best receivers in the game who's screaming and yelling could you please sign me and they're not doing anything so if you really wanted to be objective about it you could step away and say yeah what's up with you old man what are you doing you got the money Spend it. Why aren't you spending the money? So, I get it. I mean, it's... He's right, too. They're not going to be very good. His kids are going to be left with a lousy team in the next few years. And it's worth $11 billion. Why not sell? I'd sell. You'd sell. Hell, we would have sold it $3 billion. As I tell my kids, you should only have to make a billion once. So, it does kind of add up. It does. Um, it won't happen. Okay? They, they haven't spent any money. True. Um, they've done so little that it's just flat out weird. Um, and I can see how you would conclude the old man is spending less in order to slash and burn to sell. Maximize profits. Remember, everyone, this is a $150 million investment or 160 whatever that's been flipped into a 10 billion dollar asset. That's a pretty good run any way you cut it. I'd cash out, but no way no way old Jerry is doing it and no way old Jerry is doing it right now. It won't happen for a few reasons uh, anytime soon. Uh, but I, I, I kind of like the thinking. I don't think it's quite as outrageous the line of thinking as, as people are making it out to be. Um, because it's what Dallas's inaction is weird. All right, here's why it won't happen. Okay, one of the big problems in the NFL right now is the franchises have appreciated at an amazing clip. The business is worth more than it's ever been worth. You got a problem though. 
It's so expensive, few people can buy. It's Austin, Texas on steroids. The pool of buyers is really small. Really, really small. NFL owners love the fact, including the old man in Dallas, love the fact that their the values of their franchises have shot up. But, of course, value is what somebody's willing to pay. And there are very few people that can, and I would say will pay, 8 to $11 billion for a franchise. And I'll give you an example why. I said this, I know it's boring stuff to most people, but when, when the commander's sold. It was a fire sale because the NFL ran out the owner because he's a piece of trash. He was a loser. I mean, their team lost. That's all they care about. They don't care if you're a perv. They don't care if you are a criminal. They don't care if you are whatever compromising stories come with you. What owners care about is your franchise succeeds so the network succeeds so they all make money. That's what they care about. Washington was failing miserably and they said, let's find a way to trap him and get him out. I know what we'll do. We'll overpay. The problem is the $6 billion price tag, it was hard to find investors. They had to pool together investors because there's just not that many people named Bezos, not named Bezos, that can do it. And not many people that are not Saudis that will do it. So it's not as easy as people think. You throw a for sale sign out there and somebody buys. It doesn't quite work that way. So the next buyer is Jeff Bezos. That's the next buyer in the NFL. He would already be an owner if the owner of the Commanders didn't write it into the agreement that he Jeff Bezos couldn't buy the team. Bezos is running around with his girlfriend or wife or whatever she is, and they're looking for something to buy. Now, he'll do it. And he'd pay $10 billion for the Cowboys. He would. And he'd be a good owner. He'd be a better owner than Jerry Jones, probably. And the NFL would love it. So, whoever is next up to sell... If it were Dallas, there's the one guy that could give you your $10 billion, and he'd do it. He would. But I think it's a market of one. The Cowboys aren't for sale that we know of. I don't think they will be for sale. And remember, there's, only, there's a very tiny pool of buyers, and it's, it's a guy named Bezos. So the NFL had a hard time finding an owner with the money to buy Washington for $6 billion. Dallas for 10 to $11 billion is going to be tough, unless Jeff Bezos wants to show it off with his wife, which he might. Two... Jeff, Jeff, the Saudis would do it. Whoever this guy is for Fox is saying, well, the Saudis will do it. Yeah, yeah, they would. But there's a problem. you got to think this stuff through. Um, in terms of winning, it doesn't fit. Let me explain to you what the Saudis do. Yeah, they buy, they, they practice sport washing. That is, they sort of hide and deflect their human rights abuses, and there are many. They like to hide those by buying sports franchises and doing all these fun things that make people talk less about their human rights abuses. So, yeah, they do that. But they also buy teams to win. They've done it around the world. Can't work in the NFL. The NFL is a salary cap. You can't just buy your way to winning. If that were true, Jones would win. You can't. There's a hard salary cap. So it doesn't make sense for a Saudi group to say, you know, they've done this in, in soccer around the world. Well, they'll just say, we'll just buy all the best players. And they do. And they win. But in the NFL, it can't work that way. So if you buy a team, whether you buy them for $11 billion or $5 billion, it doesn't matter. And you say, we're going to spend $500 million on the on the payroll. It doesn't work that way in the NFL. So they can't win. You, you can't... the. The biggest salary doesn't work in the NFL. So Saudis and Mideast investors buy teams and outspend everyone to win. In the NFL, you won't be able to do that. No matter how much money you have, the cap is the same for every owner. And it's called a hard cap. So it's not that attractive to an owner who has unlimited funds to say, I'll buy a team and win. That'll be cool. It's harder in the NFL because that's not what matters. It's how you use that salary within the cap. So I, I do think there's another couple of Saudi angles, though. So buying the win doesn't work here. So if I'm sure somebody's asked Jerry Jones, I'll give you 10, I'll give you 15. 
and he's probably turned them down, but they've probably thought it through. And he's even reminded them, hey, look, man, you can't go and spend $500 million. Actually, The cap is actually 254 and that's it. And we all have the same amount of money to play with. So you got to go to work, and you got to know what you're doing. Um, I do think there is a Saudi angle, though, eventually. Because an owner... They're going to run out of Americans that will buy. They're going to run out of Americans that have the money to buy. So the, the angle is this. The NFL is great for sport washing. It would be great for sport washing. You bring a favorable impression to the most popular sport in this country by far. And even though your country has terrible human rights records, the... The upside, the PR is going to be outstanding. It's the best PR buy you could make. American fantasy football players and gamblers don't care about anything but the show. So it's a good way to sport wash for the Saudis. Two, um, the next president of the United States will be very Saudi friendly. And he hates the NFL. You laugh? Okay. Uh, He hates the NFL. The NFL laughed in his face when he wanted to buy a franchise, and he's been bitter ever since. They said, your money's no good here, man. So, one, sport washing makes sense for the Saudis. Two, the next president of the United States, likely the next president of the United States, scream, throw up, cheer, do whatever you want with that statement, I don't care, um, is going to be Saudi-friendly. And the Saudis know they can buy favoritism with the Trump family. So Trump, the protectionists, isn't a protectionist when it comes to the Saudis at all. Um, He wants their money. His son-in-law wants their money. and They've been chasing their money for a long time. It's a great way to buy your way in. And he's a guy that would push for you. He's also a guy that's got a lot of friends that are owners. If anyone could broker that deal and soften it a little bit, it would be your next president. Likely your next president. So he'd push for it. But while that part works, um, his friends that are NFL owners would probably be cool with it, I think, because it would drive up the value. So he'd push for Saudi ownership. If you say, well, Jeff, what does the President of the United States have to do with NFL owners? A lot, actually. A lot. I mean, what do you mean? That's a pretty close fraternity. He likes their fraternity. He wants their money, and he's a friend of theirs. And he's chasing Saudi money, or his son-in-law is. So I, th- I think it would, I think it makes some sense. Part three, though, Jerry's not selling. I'm sorry. I don't see it. You can disagree all you want. I don't see it. No way. He said he's not selling before. And the window is shutting on Dallas. If you wanted to argue, man, buddy, now is the time to get out, you could make a pretty good argument. You could make a compelling argument that any normal person invested 150, whose investment is now 11 billion, should sell. Yeah, sure. Sure. He doesn't see it that way. He doesn't. He's delusional. He thinks he knows what he's doing. The old man and his son... Whatever you want to say about them, they love that team. They do. They try so hard, way too hard, and he's not very good at it. But you can't deny that old man. People argue all the time, it's just for money, it's just for money. I don't believe that. I really don't. Post-Jimmy Johnson Super Bowl run, the most important thing to that old man is one day putting his hand on a trophy that didn't have Jimmy Johnson all over it. That's what he's always wanted. And I think he thinks he could still get there, although that window is just slamming shut. But I think he thinks he can get there. I really do. And this might be, he might even know this, I don't know. It's his last chance. He's 107 or something like that, who knows. But... I don't think he can let them go right now. I don't think he would let them go, even for the money. Not now, at least. Do I think the Jones family sells one day? Yeah, I do. I do. I don't think it's anytime soon, because I think that delusional old man really believes he can still win. 
And truthfully, this upcoming season, if he signs C.D. Lamb and he and he has Dak Prescott healthy, this is their last and best chance for a while. Probably the last and best chance of his lifetime. After this season, the window is slammed shut. Shut. Shut and locked. Good night. It's over for a while. So, yeah, I think they'll sell one day. I do. If Jeff Bezos or the Saudis offered him $10 billion today, would he sell? $12 billion today, would he sell? $15 billion today, would he sell? Right now, 